Hello, my name is Yochai Korem, and I am the CEO of Cyberin. In today's session, I'll try to give you the five main steps needed to build a successful threat intelligence program. So let's begin. First of all, why someone need a successful digital risk protection and threat intelligence program, and why it is key to the strategy. I would say there are two types of answers. First of all, on the strategic level, um, the cybersecurity team, the CISO, would like to provide evidence that uh, there is an imminent and real threat. It's not just something that happens to others. And a good threat intelligence program can provide the day-to-day -day evidences that there is a risk. There are people who are trying to uh, uh, go after the organization, and you can uh, get everyone to work together with you um, on uh, improving the security. Secondly, you want to be up to date with the reference threats, so you are not uh, preparing yourself to the last year war. Uh, but actually looking ahead and trying to bring the right strategy and the right uh, architecture for this. And on the operational front, uh, a good threat intelligence and digital risk protection program would allow you to gain ongoing identification on, of every uh, chat or any intention, any exposure uh, that could be risking the organization. Some of it could be coming from propagation of data outside of your organization, from third parties or partners that you would like to capture some of it could be coming or targeting your brand. So things that are actually outside your network, the social media um, pages, et cetera. And of course, uh, you would like to be able to remediate. So any phishing attempts, any fraudulent activity, um, of course, a good program would be able to support you taking those down. So starting with the first layer um, is defining the goal. And the goal in my perspective is firstly to receive pinpointed gathered uh, intelligence. So um, in the intelligence world, I'll divide it to three layers. The first one and the most important is the one that is, direct, is mentioning you. So specific alerts or information that is actionable. And if you fix the issues that are mentioned there, you are able to uh, directly improve the security. Basic example, if there is leaked credentials of one of the employees, uh, resetting the password would be the quick and immediate remediation. So this is the targeted intelligence. But it's also important to receive um, a more wider scope on what happens to your peers in the industry or other companies in the same region, as well as global threats. So everyone or many people uses Microsoft or Cisco, et cetera. So if there are any, uh, is there any problem with those uh, products, you would like to receive information about it ahead of time. So this is first uh, step one, defining the goal. The next pro uh, layer is you know, putting the head of a hacker, of a threat actor, and trying to identify what would a threat actor find if they look for you. So what are your digital assets? Discover them. So what are the domains uh, that someone in marketing uh, registered three years ago? What are the IPs that you're currently using? And most importantly today, what are the cloud assets that you are using? Uh, this is important to validate that you are aware of your digital surface and you're not missing any shadow IT. And of course, continuously validate uh, for any issue, issues, misconfigurations, problems that could be um, fixed before the threat actor is taking advantage of them. The third layer is collecting data, data from open, deep, and dark web. Um, and it is important to have a variety of sources that will allow us to verify we're not missing any critical information. So, um, of course, all the darknet and marketplaces and different onions is, is critical. But in today's world, threat actors are, after the initial message uh, of being able to buy or sell something, they will move to a Telegram channel for a more closer discussion. So, of course, you want to be able to track those uh, social media accounts, closed Facebook groups, as well as places like code repositories, uh, application stores, um, and many other areas where data could be available, mentioning yourself, um, your product, your customers, your employees. And it's important to verify you have access to those. And of course, this could be quite complex to achieve the access. Hence, it's important to verify you're working with a partner that has these capabilities. And this is not, by the way, not just a one-time activity. This source development is a continuous process where it is important to validate that you know we have a partner that knows how to get the new Telegram channel or the new marketplaces that is being created um, just uh, three days ago. So the next step is validating that this answers your business risk. You don't want just you know, data. You want to verify this, or this data um, is helping you to reduce business risk. And in general, in this area, we are looking at six different categories from digital footprint to data leakage and account takeover to brand abuse, 
phishing and fraud, uh, two, two other examples. And the last one we uh, look at is a techware where someone is trying to uh, attack your product or attack products that you are using. By, uh, so a good threat intelligence program will provide you um, very good coverage on all of those six categories, verifying you are protected or at least you are aware of what's going on there. And the last point, and maybe the most critical, it's all about remediation. We don't, we don't want just to report on problems. We want to verify we're able to remediate. Remediate either because we're integrating into a SOAR, or ticketing system that allows a quick and swift playbooks within the organization uh, handling the issues they identified internally, and or uh, the ability to remediate outside. So remediation outside includes phishing site that is being detected or a fake social media profile that is being uh, trying to reach your employees or your customers, um, maybe a source code that is in, being exposed on, on GitHub and other uh, code repositories. So uh, remediation also includes the ability to um, do the remediation outside the perimeter um, in, a, in a form of takedowns and other types of operations. And of course, you want to have a very visual and very clear reporting on what's the status and how effective uh, the program is to you. So these are the five main steps that I would uh, recommend to look at. And I want to give you some examples, day-to-day -day examples that we see, um, maybe to illustrate a little bit better. And I'll try to cover mo mostly four areas of phishing um, inside the threat, um, uh, shadow IT and fraud. Uh, let's see how the time permits us. So le let me start with the phishing. Phishing is a very common uh, techniques to gain um, access to credentials, uh, PII or other information uh, that is useful by the threat or could be used by threat actors to engage in the next steps of uh, next step of the attack. And in many cases, we see phishing attacks targeting uh, big brands. Uh, here you see an example of how a good phishing site looks like. You know, the logo and the look and feel is really as if uh, it was Tommy Hilfinger's site. But in reality, this is, of course, a fake page. It was created just for, uh, for this. Um, and we see that in many B2B and mostly B2C organizations. Um, here, here is an example of uh, a bank in, uh, in this case, uh, South Africa, and a bank called NetBank. And here we can see a list of uh, about 20 phishing sites that are all targeting the customers of NetBank. Um, something that is quite easy to see is that the structure of this phishing site is very similar, NetBank um, um, and NetBankMoney.htm um, in most of them. So this leads us to the conclusion or to suspect suspicion that this is actually a phishing kit. So it's not just a single uh, phishing site that is created manually one by one. This is actually part of a, a more sophisticated uh, attack. And a phishing kit is actually probably one of the most cost-effective ways uh, for a threat actor to create multiple sites with a very, um, very small efforts. If we go to this uh, phishing kit and we're able to obtain it from one of those uh, phishing sites, we can see the different techniques uh, that allow you to um, you know, really uh, build again and again the same phishing site in a different domain. <clears throat> and when we analyze the code behind this phishing, uh, phishing kit, uh, we actually see some information. So for example, we can see this uh, uh, word Spox um, and, some, um, and some details that are referring to the, um, the contact information of this threat actor. So this is actually a threat actor called uh, Spox that is actually selling uh, this, this phishing kit. Um, it's actually quite attractive, $200, and you get your own phishing kit. Um, you see on the marketing uh, page, it's not just NetBank, it's actually quite uh, a long list of organizations, most of them are financials, that you are able to quickly create a phishing site for yourself without any technical knowledge. So. You know, what we're doing, in, in, among others, we are able to contact those um, threat actors. It's a very important part of, of the day-to-day. -day. Um, and in this discussion with the threat actor, he is actually sharing with us some of the key features of this phishing kit. For example, the fact that this is a true login phishing site and not just a regular one um, as an advanced feature that you know, uh, he promotes or he or she promotes uh, within this, uh, uh, this discussion. So, what is a true login phishing site? True login is a case where the um, phishing site is using a reverse proxy um, to bring data from the real bank login page in this example to the phishing website, thus giving the victim 
uh, the feeling that he's actually in the real uh, fishing uh, in the real uh, banking page and getting a receiving data um, as if he's surfing there uh, by that uh, uh, more is maybe able to do even transactions and the threat actor is able to collect uh, more data around this. So uh, quite a sophisticated kit. Um, and you can see, you can define yourself uh, whether this is a true login phishing. Uh, you, you use this functionality or not. This is the configuration file of the phishing site. Do you want it to mail your result or you want it in a textual file? There's all kinds of uh, uh, functions like the anti-bot one. So we went one step further in this case. Uh, we found encoded code of how the uh, phishing site uh, works. And when we decoded it, we actually see and more details about the method of the true login uh, phishing site uh, to contact the real login page of the, of the bank. And what, what we can see here is the details uh, of the techniques that the phishing site uses to communicate with the bank. And while by identifying this technique, um, we can actually provide uh, the bank, the IOC, the actually indicators of how to identify um, when someone is creating a connection um, which is not a legitimate one, but uh, rather uh, the phishing site or the phishing kit uh, connection and actually block it before it actually influences the account. So here you can see an example of a more sophisticated phishing investigation that actually leads to a technique to identify and block um, this uh, phishing kit from being effective and thus of course protecting the, the, the audience and the customer base. I want to reflect about another threat, which is the insider threat. There are, of course, the malicious insider threats or full insider threats. Um, these are, uh, of course, uh, critical situations. But in many cases, we are talking about the accidental uh, insider threat. Someone that, by mistake, uh, discloses information or shared uh, confidential uh, data uh, in an area that is accessible to people that are, are not intended to be able to reach this data. Um, and we can see all kinds of example. Again, another uh, bank here with uh, details, bank account, and some other information that may not be uh, widely available. Uh, contract details and contact details that are uh, going to different organization. Uh, source code that is available out there in GitHub for anyone to access. Um, that should have been saved in a different repository that, of course, is closed. Again, misconfigurations or mistakes by, by different employees. And here we can even see an example of a Trello board. The Trello board is task management board that is actually being uh, shared between different uh, um, maybe teams inside and outside the banks. And of course, this includes a lot of data about the current activities that could be used for phishing emails and other types of attacks later on. So uh, this of course needs to be detected by a good uh, program. Um, and here is an example of fraud. Um, in this case, we're talking about an e-commerce site where someone is actually uh, you know, selling products. It's a German site in this case. And we saw a threat actor offering um, different techniques to get a very large discount. What they were actually doing uh, is uh, um, they found a problem in the website where you can actually use multiple coupons or the same coupon multiple times, thus getting to a very high discount. Of course, they would tell you this, uh, this technique by you know, getting 10 or 20% of the saving uh, you, you do. This is, this is how they were promoting it in different forums. Um, and of course, we were able to capture this and alert the organization around this problem. Here you can see uh, the specific uh, vulnerability that we identified. All in all, we were able to save about uh, almost $3 million of um, orders that um, were using these techniques and you know, a loss of money to the organization in a very bad way. So these were some examples uh, of uh, problems that we identified. So maybe two, uh, two words about Cyberint. Um, you know, what we're doing, uh, we are looking at, uh, at the organization that has different interfaces exposed and the threat actors that are trying to um, target at them. And we are from the uh, outside the perimeter, we are A, looking at an organization, continuously discovering and scanning for any digital asset, what is what's named the, the tech surface management or tech surface monitoring. And on top of that, we are adding uh, very deep roots into the open, deep, and dark web, collecting a lot of data, trying to identify any leakage or any mentions targeting the organization and providing, of course, early alerts. We're doing that by using our technology uh, called Argos, which has different models from threat intelligence to dark web monitoring, attack surface mapping, forensics, different phishing detection capabilities, and more. And alongside, I would say, uh, high-level expert uh, services, 
uh, for you know, targeted uh, monitoring and triaging of the intelligence gathered in different languages to virtual human operations engaging with threat actors as we see some examples as other deep investigation. So I hope you enjoyed and learned. Um, I really uh, found it uh, valuable talking today. I hope you are going to en enjoy the rest of the, of the sessions. Feel free to contact me at yuhai.cybering.com or just find me in LinkedIn, Yuhai uh, Korem, and I'll be happy to continue uh, the discussion and see if that was valuable for you. Thank you very much and enjoy the day.